Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys? We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! We're starting a new book today. We sure are. Do you know what it is? It's Second Chronicles. Chapter 1. Chapter 1. Yes. and Oh, you, you know what else? What? David's fucking dead. I know. I was just going to say, <laughs> do you remember where we left off? Yes. At First Chronicles? David's dead. David's dead and Solomon's taken over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of happy. I know. In 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 the context in so of the chronicler, as, yeah, that David's dead. Yes, thank, I'm just saying, thank like, goodness, we're done with David. We don't have to listen to him like suck his dick. Anymore. Although although he liked him so much that we might have to hear like residual David stuff. <laughs> I don't really know <laughs> residual like, David. I'm just saying like that's that's kind of the David that never ended. I mean. I don't know. This is the David that never ends. It just goes on and on, my friends. Some people started singing and not knowing what it was. And they'll just keep on singing it forever just because this is the David that never ends. It's a hit. We're going we're gonna to be like number one on the charts. Yeah. You think? Yeah. yeah. Publish that on like Apple uh, Music or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Be, be on the lookout for, ev- for it, everybody. In no, no way, yeah, right. no, no way not whatsoever. Happening. Yeah, no, no. Okay, you ready to get into this shit? I am ready to get into this shit. Let's Okey-dokey. do this. Okay. Okay, Second Chronicles chapter one. <laughs> Are you just in a singing mood today or what? I'm always in a singing mood, but always, I'm huh? I'm very excited that we are moving right along through this. Yeah, ding dong, the David's dead. And guess what? Second Chronicles is pretty short. Like, there's not hey, a lot of chapters. This is working out well. Yeah. yeah. I think there's like 36 chapters, maybe. That's a lot of chapters, actually. No, that's actually not. It's more than, there's only 29 in First Chronicles. I know, but there's like a bunch in the other books. This is still a relatively short book. All right, all right. I'm just saying. I'm the one that's reading this shit. I know. <laughs> hey? But it's one of those chapters that has a lot of chapters. Is it Psalms? Because it's like, the chapters are like three okay. page, you know, three sentences long. That, that book, I'm not looking forward to. <laughs> just to be clear. Okay, ready? I'm ready. Solomon's son, David. Wait, what? Solomon's no. son of David is what I, I meant like, to say. I was like, wait a second, that's not correct. That's backwards, yeah. yeah. Solomon, comma, should be there, comma. Yeah, yeah. Son of David, mm, comma, mm. is how that should I got read. It, I got it. Took firm control of his kingdom. Firm. Firm. It was very firm. For the Lord his God was with him and made him very powerful. Okay. That's what happened. Yeah. Solomon called together all the leaders of Israel, the generals and captains of the army, the judges, and all the political and clan leaders. Then, that's my favorite part. The the then. Then, (laughs) he led the entire assembly to the place of worship in Gibeon, for God's tabernacle was located there. Oh, okay. Parentheses voice, ready? I'm ready. This was the tabernacle. That Moses, the Lord's servant, had made in the wilderness. Yeah. Okay. And it was a very detailed making of that tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Even. Yeah, they tried to make. They tried to make um, the the new um, land building. Yeah. Right. They tried to make that as detailed as the ark. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like with the whole God gave David all the plans for this, and it's like, mm, but did he though? Maybe we should. You know how they have the Ark experience or Ark encounter down there in Kentucky or whatever with mm-hmm. uh, what's his face, the the dude that runs that thing. Yeah, I don't know that guy's um, name, but Ham, yeah. Ken Ham, oh. or I think that's right, Ken, Ken, Ken something. It was, I think it's Ham. Anyway, whatever. Who cares, right? Um, but anyway, we should build the Tabernacle experience. Oh my god! And just put up a fucking tent. <laughs> and charge people for it. <laughs> oh we'll put a box God. inside. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, I'm here for this. Ooh, that reminds me. You know how we live across the street from a church? Yeah. Um, there's it a might. new there's a new sign up. Like somebody just bought it. It's been empty for ages. Yeah. 
And, and we've been wondering what's going to go. Like, there's been people working on it. Yeah, like, they were painting the um, trim and stuff like that. Yeah, so we've been wondering what the fuck's going in there. Yeah, like, somebody clearly bought the place, and they're cleaning it up and doing work on it. And now there's a new sign out front that says, what is it? W-B-A-C. W-B-A-C. Yeah, and the only thing I could find was Western Baptist Association Churches or something. Yeah, if you guys know what WBAC is, please reach out and let us know. Yeah, I mean, that's the only thing I could find online, but if you know better than us, then please. Please. We want to know what's what we're in for here. What is happening? We're already very concerned. Like, we were like, please not Baptist, please not Baptist, but then now we think maybe it's Baptist. Because what else could the B stand for? Right. I was scared at first when I saw WB. I was like, wait, Westboro Baptist Church? What? What? That's, but that's a church. I don't think that's like a like denomination that's out there it could be like they're spreading they could be spreading they could have like out churches i don't know how they run (laughs) shit man do i look like i understand church organizations right but anyway if anybody knows exactly what wbac is let us know let us know we we need to know what's going in across the street from us so that we can prepare ourselves prepare ourselves i mean what what are we gonna do i don't know just we should we... we should nail we should get a knife and we should like um Put our business card in their door. Oh my you know, God. just like uh, like the uh, um, Martin, shit, Luther, Martin Luther, the yeah, thirty nine yeah. theses or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. should do that. Normally, we'll just put like one of our flyers that we have. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> not not with a knife in the door. That, yeah, no. That wouldn't fly. Maybe we could get like one of those knives that um like go in on themselves, like for like hol- for Halloween, <laughs> you know, and then just tape it up there. No, because just for the hell of it, they would take it as um a threat. And then they would find out that it was us and we would get in trouble for threatening them, even yeah. though that's not what the intent was at all. Right. It was just funny because, you know, yeah. we wanted to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> but we could tape, um, we could tape one of our flyers up and we could use washi tape with hearts on it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. That or was unicorns. Much better. Unicorns. It's a much better approach. Yeah, much I like approach. that. Yeah. I like that. Much less uh, aggressive. Right. Yeah. See? I yeah. Like that. That's, okay. that's better. Let me continue this. Okay. David. No, David. Still got to talk about David. No, I was right. He's residual, dead. Yeah. Residual David. He had We're already. We're just going to refer to him as residual David. Residual <laughs> David had already moved the Ark of God from Cariath Jerem to the tent he had prepared for it in Jerusalem. The tent being the tabernacle or just a tent? The tent. Remember, the tent. he was told, don't be building shit for me. Right. But was it the tabernacle or was it just a tent? It was a tent. Well, then. Where's the tabernacle? Because it's still there somewhere. They're talking about it. I don't fucking know. Why wouldn't they just set up the tabernacle? I don't know. (laughs) But the bronze altar made by Bezalel, son of Uri, and grandson of Hur, was there at Gibeon in front of the tabernacle of the Lord. So Solomon and the people gathered in front of it to consult the Lord. Okay. They were consulting him. Yeah. Um, They were consultants. He was part of the meeting. They sat down and they had a meeting and the Lord was at the other side of the table. Wait, if you consult somebody, does that make you the consultant or the person you're consulting is the consultant? The person you're consulting is the consultant. So God is a consultant. Right. I guess okay. you're like the consultees or something. Oh, I'm not okay. really sure okay. 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 how that so, works. So they were like, we're consulting you. Yeah. And God is like, I am the consultant. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. Hypothetically. Right. There in front of the tabernacle, Solomon went up to the bronze altar in the Lord's presence and sacrificed 1,000 burnt offerings on it. That's got to be really time consuming, you know? <sighs> How long do you think it takes to sacrifice 1,000 sacrifices? I, I don't know. That's got to be, it's got to be taking a long, really, really fucking long time. I mean, when I think about how long it takes me to write 1,000 words, it's about an hour. Right, just how many, but think if it was like sacrifice. If I had to light uh, something on fire every right, time. Yeah. yeah. That would take probably a good three hours at least, I would I mean, think. if you're just like, I mean, if you're throwing in the same fire and you're just like kill and throw, kill, throw, kill, throw okay, on the fire, right? Like, think about just lighting candles. Yeah. Like, it took me a good couple minutes to light this three-wick candle earlier yeah. this evening. And then you almost caught the carpet on fire. I did, because the match <laughs> burnt, like, real quick. 
<laughs> and um, well, first it wasn't light because I got cheap matches from like the dollar store or whatever. Yeah. And then um, so I finally got it to light, and by that time it burnt itself down real quick, and I accidentally dropped it and had to like uh-huh. pat it out. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> and then so I did it again, but then um, only one of the wicks lit, and I was like, God damn it! And then I had to light the other two. So I mean, it took me a good like solid three or four minutes to you light did. this fucking three wick candle. Yeah. Yeah. So it. If you consider that, like, let's round that up to five because you're dealing with animals. So right. five minutes. Three... But they're not lighting them on fire. They're killing them and then throwing them on a fire. And But I'm assuming, like, they usually eat this stuff afterwards. So, like, it's not just throwing oh, it on the yeah, fire. Yeah, it's preparing They've got to prepare it. them. So you got to prepare, oh, wow. butcher, and throw on a fire a thousand animals. It takes for fucking ever, right? That They must have been there a week. Right? That night. Well, that, apparently, apparently it only, only took, like, a day. Yeah, it took. Just the one day. They're like, I'm really good at killing animals. Watch this shit. I mean, they do it a lot. Right, So right, they have so, a lot of practice. Right, yeah. That night, God appeared to Solomon and said, what you want? <laughs> Ask and I'll give it to you. Damn. He just appeared, huh? What you, what you, what you want? The question is, though, was it in a dream or was it like appeared, appeared? Because I there's a to difference. Recall, I seem to recall when we read through this. Earlier, like, whatever, Second Kings or whatever. Yeah. I tend to think that it was in his dream. Because remember, he's like, I don't need nothing. Just make me wise. Right. But, like, sometimes when they want to make someone seem more important, they just use the word appear. Mm-hmm. And, and at night, right? Yeah, but and like, they leave it. But they don't clarify. And But then earlier in the Bible, though, they're like, yeah, God doesn't show himself to anybody. So Right. So then you're like, Which so he doesn't show himself, but he, he appears appeared. to people. Yeah. But does he appear? Okay, whatever. Who cares? I think it was a dream. Who I think cares? he appeared in it's a gonna, dream. We're going to go with dream. Solomon replied to God, you showed great and faithful love to residual David, my father. <laughs> and now you have made me king in his place. Oh, Lord God, please continue to keep your promise to residual David, my father. <laughs> for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. False. Right. That is hyperbole times infinity. Right. Yeah. We worked Give, that. We remember we worked that out with the yeah. sand and counting. In yeah. One of those episodes of, of, of like last week or something. Yeah. Yeah. Give me the wisdom and knowledge to lead them properly. For who could possibly govern this great people of yours? Wait. Solomon's the most wise ever. Not yet. Is this? God but he's gonna. Him, is God? Ma- he's God's gonna make him yeah, the most wise. Yeah. Okay. He's about to make okay. him wise because that's all he asked so that's for. What, that's what he. Yeah. But the the conversation went a little bit differently. Because before, God was like, oh, well, he did say, what do you want? Yeah. And I'll give it to you. So, right. okay, yeah. All right. Conversation sounded a little different before than this one, but okay. It's sure. very similar. Okay. God said to Solomon, because your greatest desire is to help your people and you did not ask for wealth, riches, fame, or even the death of your enemies or a long life, but rather you asked for wisdom and knowledge to properly govern my people I will certainly give you the wisdom and knowledge you requested, but I will also give you wealth, riches, and fame such as no other king has had before you or will ever have in the future. Damn. Here's what I want to know. Like, I all the time hope for um, happiness for my children, health, happiness, um, a good, nice life for them. Like, that's not selfish. Right. That's kindness. But I never get any riches or I don't need fame. Honestly, I don't want fame. But I don't get wisdom or fame or riches or wealth. Nothing. Right. No, we don't get any of that shit. But they they are pretty healthy. Yeah. No, I mean, (laughs) our kids are doing great. Yeah. I mean, you know, all things being equal. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty healthy. I guess I guess you celebrate your fucking victories where you get them, yeah? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Then... Solomon returned to Jerusalem from the tabernacle at the place of worship in Gibeon, and he reigned over Israel. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Okay, next little bit. Solomon built up a huge force of chariots and horses. But why? He was going to be a peaceful king. He just liked to build things. Mm, Okay. And he didn't know yet that there wasn't going to be But it was prophesied by God. God Mm. said that he would be the peaceful one because that's why he was going to be the one to build. But he told that to... David. Yeah, with David's fucking Solomon's dad. But he didn't tell that to Solomon. Solomon doesn't know. But, okay. But it's in the Bible, so it's a prophecy that's known, according to the Bible, at the very least. But it's not known to Solomon. Why? Why? It's known it wasn't by... written down yet. Then how did it get written down? Did somebody later just assume yes. that that happened? 
Yeah, somebody later wrote it down. But so someone, that means somebody had to know. Yeah, David probably told his, like, churchy guys. He didn't necessarily tell his son. And the churchy guys didn't tell the new king? Probably not. I don't believe that shit. Okay, I don't know. I'm just telling you. I'm just saying. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses. He stationed some of them in the chariot cities and some near him in Jerusalem. The king made silver and gold as plentiful in Jerusalem as stone. And valuable cedar timber was as common as the sycamore fig trees that grow in the foothills of Judah. Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Cilicia. The king's traders acquired them from Cilicia at the standard price. Yeah, I remember them saying that actually the in the standard last time. Standard price. But you know, this is this is this is more in line with what I remember happening is that mm-hmm. Solomon was trading with all kinds of people and yes. brought all this shit in. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. Like, but like they attributed this to David in the last couple of chapters. So mm-hmm. I'm like, no, this was Solomon, and this they're kind of Solomon. touching on it, but they're leaving out the yeah. fact that Solomon like, set up like, all this trade. And he got some stuff on top of what David got. Yeah. And by the time it was all done, you know, it was yeah. very plentiful. Yeah. So. Yeah. But it wasn't plentiful. <laughs> Solomon went out and got all that shit, and um, they're saying like it was as common as the stones in the road. No, it fucking wasn't. He had it imported. Right. Right. And he set up all these trade deals. Yeah. And it was cool. Right. And I'll grant you, maybe Dave, you know, people were scared of the Israelites at this point because of because of David. Because sure. David was conquering and killing people and yeah, shit. Yeah, left and right. Whatever. And then Solomon just reaps the benefits. Sure. But whatever. Yeah. At that time, chariots from Egypt could be purchased for 600 pieces of silver and horses for 150 pieces of silver. Dang. So chariots were more expensive than the horses that pulled them. I guess that yeah. makes sense because they got parts. Right, right. They were then exported to the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Aram. The end. Okay. I Sure. So So what? Solomon's here. I don't, I don't Solomon's know. Solomon's here. He, had, he had a bunch of stuff and then he started exporting it a bit. Apparently. He sold it. Like, <laughs> he's like, eh, I got it. I don't really need it. You guys can have it. I just just give me I, some money in return. I don't return. recall that. Like, I guess he needed all that money to make the sea. I guess, yeah. Oh, that's probably what it was. Yeah, he's probably like, you know what? I don't need all these things. I'm gonna sell some of this he to make sold, a big bathtub. Yeah, he sold the horses and the chariots so that he could. Remember, he made all of those like gold shields, right? And, right. And that big old. Wing spanning thing. We shouldn't worry though. Everything he did was probably the best move because he's the wisest. He is the wisest. So he, everything he did was probably correct and right because we just have to trust in the fact that he was the wisest ever. He the wisest was, person ever. He was a wise motherfucker. A wise ass. <laughs> a wise ass. Ah. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, I, that was Second Chronicles chapter one. Sure as fuck was. And we will be back tomorrow with Second Chronicles chapter two. We'll see you guys then. Bye. Husband. Wife. Do you remember what happened yesterday? Uh, Solomon and residual David. Yes. That was. I mean, Solomon. Solomon, Solomon entered the show, entered the picture. Solomon prayed for wisdom and got it. And then um, he sold horses. The end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, right? That's, that's pretty much it. So that yeah. was uh, Second Chronicles chapter 1. Yes. And today we're getting into... Second Chronicles chapter 2. Let's go do this. Okie dokie. Okay. Second Chronicles chapter 2. <laughs> What? Just shaking it up there a bit, huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Solomon. Yeah. He decided to build a temple. To he honor- decided to. It wasn't because his dad David left him like oodles All of the fucking instructions things and, and instructions materials. for it. And, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't. You know, I whichever way we're going with it, but in this version, <laughs> in this version. Had, in the Chronicles version, he didn't just decide overnight. Right. It was kind of like laid out for him, like entirely. <laughs> like he didn't really have a fucking choice. Right. In Chronicles. Yeah. In the other version that we originally read, yeah, he decided. Right. Yeah. No, I, I can be down shit. with it from the other yeah. version. But this yeah. version, he didn't choose shit. He decided to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord and also a royal palace for himself. Yeah. 
He decided Didn't that. Didn't David build a royal? David built a royal palace for himself. We already talked about this. So yes. they built two royal palaces. The city of David is like a whole big old palace. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of palaces mm-hmm. and a lot of fucking excess. Yes, yes. And apparently it was all cool with God, God, because God of like deemed it like God's like, yeah, I'll make you rich. Yeah, yeah. I mean, good to be the king. Right, apparently, <laughs> he enlisted a force of seventy thousand laborers. 80,000 men to quarry stone in the hill country, and 3,600 foremen. Okay. Solomon also sent this message to King Hiram at Tyr. Send me cedar logs, as you did for my father David when he was building his palace. Mm -hmm. I'm about to build a temple to honor the name of the Lord my God. It will be a place to set apart to burn fragrant incense before him. To display the special sacrificial bread and to sacrifice burnt offerings each morning and evening on the Sabbaths at new moon celebrations and at the other appointed festivals of the Lord our God. That's right. He built a new temple or a new um, altar, right? And didn't he move the old one into his palace or something like that? Yeah, after he uh, went a traveling. Right. But I don't know that he's done that yet. Right. But I mean, like, that's what he's preparing to do, sort of. I don't Maybe. think I don't think so. No, no. I think this is him originally building his shit. Oh, okay, okay. Um, because he goes traveling later. I think. Got it. He has command. Oh, he's still talking here. So yeah, he got it. Continues. He has commanded Israel to do these things forever. This must be a magnificent temple because our God is greater than all the other gods that do exist, <laughs> that we do not question exist. And it's got to be so magnificent so that the Babylonians can come in and destroy it. And melt it all down. Exactly. Yes. And so they, they can get rich off of our money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But who can really build him a worthy home, question mark? Not even the highest heavens can contain him. Mm. So who am I to consider building a temple for him except as a place to burn sacrifices to him? I mean, he said all he needs is a tent mm-hmm. and the fucking ark to sit yeah. on. So, yeah. I mean, like, he's not real picky Yeah, from what I've heard. Anyway. Obviously. So send me a master craftsman who can work with gold, silver, bronze, and iron, as well as with purple, scarlet, and blue cloth. Mm, they had one of those when they were building the uh, tabernacle and the uh, the ark and shit. Yep, they, they sure had, did. Yeah. They sure did. He must be a skilled engraver who can work with the craftsmen of Judah and Jerusalem who were selected by my father David. They were, David, of course, of David. course they were selected by David. David, good we old, love you, David. Good old residual David. David, David, have you heard about David? David, he's the best. <laughs> I was trying to come up with something. That but was a great song. Yeah. It didn't, it it awesome. didn't happen. It was amazing. Also, continued Solomon. Yeah. Send me cedar, cypress, and red sandalwood logs from Lebanon. For I know that your men are without equal at cutting timber in Lebanon. That we knew. Mm-hmm. I will send my men to help them. Even Where do though they need they help don't, if they're without equal? They're the best, but I'm going to send my men right? to help. Yeah. I, it sounds like you're sending your men to, like, look over my men. And, or enslave them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> An immense amount of timber will be needed, for the temple I'm going to build will be very large and magnificent. Yeah. In payment for your woodcutters, I will send 100,000 bushels of crushed wheat, 100,000 bushels of barley, 110,000 gallons of wine, and 110,000 gallons of olive oil. That sounds like a lot of shit. Let's trade. Yeah. We go and trade. But how much of the other stuff is he getting in return for so that? So much. Right? Yeah. I don't know if it was a fair trade. I don't either. I mean, we don't really hear from... Well, I guess we do hear from King Hiram. But, I mean, still, we don't know. Right. We don't know what was fair. Yeah. So. King Hiram sent this letter of reply to Solomon. It is because the Lord loves his people that he has made you their king. That's why. That, yeah. It wasn't that you were born to David or anything. Right. It wasn't like... It wasn't down that, to you. Yeah. It wasn't that, like, <laughs> all of the priests and whatever, like, approved all of this. Right. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who made the heavens and the earth. He has given King David a wise son. Mm, there's that residual David again. Yeah. Gifted with skill and understanding, who will build a temple for the Lord and a royal palace for himself. 
He's like, I am so excited about this fucking plan. I cannot wait yeah. to give you materials for you to build yourself a palace. This sounds so cool. He just sounds like he's kissing ass because he's got a job to do. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to, this guy's my boss. I got to go, you well, know, he's whatever. He's like, I'm glad he came to me because yeah. now we're going to, you know, reap some of the benefits. I can put this and... shit on my resume, man. Yeah. Like, this is going to look good. I am sending you a master craftsman named Huramabi who is extremely talented. His mother is from the tribe of Dan in Israel, and his father is from Tyr. That's interesting. Oh. One of the master craftsmen from the last, when they did the mm-hmm. Ark and stuff, who was, or whatever, mm-hmm. they were from Dan also. Mm-hmm. So Dan must have be a artisan group. Yeah. yeah. That's where you go to get your liberal arts <laughs> like, degree. <laughs> he is skillful at making things from gold, silver, bronze, and iron. And he also works with stone and wood. And he can work with purple, blue, and scarlet cloth and fine linen. Wow. Damn, he can do it all. Right? Yeah. He is also an engraver and can follow Psh. any design given to him. Man. Like one any dude, design. Any one design. dude is doing all of this engraving and etching. And, Apparently. I mean, what the fuck? He's really good. He will work with your craftsmen and these, oh, those appointed by my Lord David, your father. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's dead! He's dead! Let him die, you guys. He's not going to die. I, I think we're going to hear about him through the entire 36 entire book. chapters? I think probably. This is bullshit. Send along the wheat, barley, olive oil, and wine that my lord has mentioned. We will cut whatever timber you need from the Lebanon mountains and we'll float the logs and rafts down the coast of the Mediterranean Sea to Joppa. From there, you can transport the logs up to Jerusalem. There you go. Solomon took a census of all foreigners in the land of Israel, like the census his father had taken. Wait, he took a census? He sure as fuck did. I don't remember. I don't. Did, did, I don't I recall don't remember, that. I don't remember if that happened in, in the last one or not. Well, this is a census of all the foreigners in the land. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and it says like the census his father had taken, but I don't think his father took a census of the foreigners in the land. No, it was the warriors, yeah. basically. Yeah, and he counted one hundred fifty-three thousand six hundred. He assigned 70,000 of them as common laborers. He's like, hey, you guys are not from around here. You're now my slave. Right? Boom. Yeah. Assigned them. Mm-hmm. 80,000 as quarry workers. You guys are from further away, so I like you even less. So you get the really hard work. Right, right. Okay. And 3,600 as foremen. Mm. You guys are kind of close in. You get to be in charge. All right, you guys are. You guys are the best of the bunch. Yeah, yeah. You can be my water bearer, etc. The end. Oh, that was it. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sorry. I I was so like. I was expecting more. Like that was a really short fucking chapter. I told you it was shortish. Damn. Yeah. Well, I'm. I think we're gonna get sick of hearing about David. I'm already sick about hearing. No, but I mean, like more so. I think it's just gonna keep happening. He's dead. Because, like, obviously, the chronicler is like completely in love with this dude. Well, he wants um, the Israelites to be completely in love with this dude. Yeah. No, I know. It's annoying. It really like, is We annoying. get it. Yeah. Are, are Were the people really that simple? Yes. Yes, the, they were. Are they really still that simple? Yes. Yes, yes, yes they, they are. are. <laughs> what is what is Trump's new um, make America glorious and great again? Oh, seriously? Yeah. So it's That's so dumb. Magaga or Magaga? something. Magaga? <laughs> something I'm going to Magaga. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, you know he's back on Twitter now, right? I know that Although he was allowed back. He's on allowed Twitter. back on Twitter. He has Although not he written is anything back on Twitter. as of the point that we're recording this. I, I don't believe he's written anything. I preemptively blocked him. He he tore Elon a new ass. He, he was like, he he really tore into him. Oh, like, wow. he was uh, like telling him how he sucks and stuff. I guess and oh, like nice. just kind of shitting funny. on him. There were a bunch of people who said. Um, to check your follows because they were checking their follows and they found that somebody had turned them on to follow Elon. And they're like, I would never have done this. So, yeah. no, they, fuck. it was, I was. Well, it wasn't, they turned me, they didn't turn me on to follow. They um, unblocked me. Oh, okay. I had blocked him previously and I found one day that I saw one of his tweets and I was like, wait a second. I right. blocked that motherfucker because I don't want to see his shit. Right. And all of a sudden, I'm seeing his tweets, and I'm like, no, I don't want to see his tweets. You know, some way to get around that and maybe not um, draw as much attention to yourself is to mute him instead. Yeah. 
Um, because but I want to way... I want to draw attention. I don't care. No, I know. I'm just although I'm probably getting knocked on like how much I'm seen on Twitter now or something. Yeah, like the whole shadow ban thing. Right. He is. He has said that that's what he's going to be doing. Awesome. So because you know he loves free speech. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what he's all about. You the know? people that cry the loudest for free speech are just the ones that want to drop n bombs and say um, anti Semitic bullshit. So. And, and Take away the free speech from the people that mm-hmm. they don't like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's only free speech if, if to them, if the people they like can mm-hmm. say whatever they want. Yeah, that's that's all that matters. Yeah. So, yep. All right, we're we're just way off topic now. Are we ever really off topic though? If our topic is the Bible and politics, I mean, not really. No, I mean, that's we talk about that all the time. See, so. there you all go. right, but that was that was that though, right? That was um, Second, Second Chronicles. Chapter 2. And tomorrow we are going to be back with... Second Chronicles Chapter 3. All right. We'll see you guys then. Sure as fuck will. Husband. Wife. Do you remember what happened yesterday? Solomon built his temple thing, or at least was in the process of it at the very least. His palace. Yeah. And, uh... And he, and he took he... a census of all the foreigners and then made them slaves. Right. Yeah, there was that. Yep. And he hired that craftsman who was like the best craftsman ever. Yeah, I like, want that craftsman. Best. I want him in my house. Right? He can do all of our craftsman stuff. He can do all of the work. Yeah. I mean, mm. make sure he's a foreigner, though. Oh my God. <laughs> no! Just tell that all of a... our new listeners that is exactly not correct. Right. I was just, you know, going off the Bible. The, the teachings of the Bible, you know? The Bible That's does all. teach slavery, but we... We do not ascribe husband to that and wife, belief. Yeah, we are opposed to slavery and do not think that just because you are in a foreign land that you should be treated as a lesser person. That is entirely correct. Okay. In fact, I welcome all foreigners to our land because I think that is how we should operate. Yes. So, yes. anyway... That was Second Chronicles chapter two. It sure as fuck was. And today we're going to be reading Second Chronicles chapter three. Let's go do this. Okay. Okay, Second Chronicles chapter three. Okay. We gonna build some shit. Oh, so they hadn't been built yet. Okay. No, I wasn't. Like... I couldn't remember exactly. I knew the temple was like. Started at the very least. He was least. setting up trade agreements. But I thought with that King basically, yeah. But I mean, didn't David have everything fucking prepared? According to the chronicler, but he is a liar, as we've pointed out multiple right, times. Right, right. I mean, like the way the chronicler made it seem, David had it all set and ready to go. Mm-hmm. All he had to do was just like, you know, make it happen. Right, but he didn't. He didn't. Well, he did have to set up trade agreements to get all the wood. Right. And he did have to hire a craftsman. But according to the chronicler, he was like, I got everything for you, man. Yeah. David, David's got everything for you. Yeah. Yeah. So. Everything just, except the wood, I guess. Right. Right. But oh, I think there was even the, wood that it was. And all the gold and silver of. that he's having shipped in. So, right. So, whatever. Yeah. Chronicler is clearly a liar. It's all a bunch of shit. Yeah. So, Solomon began to build the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem on Mount Moriah, where the Lord had appeared to David, his father. There goes some residual David. Also, no, Solomon did not build it. His no. slaves did. <laughs> right. Okay. Yes. You remember the quarry builders and the the craftsmen that he, that he mm-hmm. you know, hired. 70,000. Not hired, but made do this. He appointed them. Appointed them. Yeah. It's a nice way of putting... You're nice a putting, slave. You're I'm a slave. I'm appointing you to this yes. position. Yes. Now go fucking do it or die. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Right. The temple was built on the threshing floor of Arwana the Jebusite. Is that the same guy that they um, built that thing on, maybe? Mm-hmm. I don't what know. Thing? Remember he, the, the King David sold that, or bought that piece of, uh, the threshing floor oh. from that one guy. I don't know. I wonder if it's the same guy. It was the site that David had selected, so probably. Oh, so it probably is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The construction began in mid-spring. That's when kings go to war. Right, but this is not a warring king, right. so he had that spare time there in the spring. Yep. Apparently. He's like, what am I going to do if I'm not warring? Right, right. I guess I'll build me Dad a palace. Dad was always at war this time of year, I, I guess. Know. Yeah, I got to do something oh, else. Oh, I miss Dad. <laughs> During the fourth year of Solomon's reign. Why didn't he build it in the first year of his reign? I don't know. He already had all his, his shit Dad around. had it all set up. Right? These are the dimensions. Mm. 
<laughs> Solomon used for the foundation of the temple of God using the standard of measurement. The old standard of measurement. Okay. okay? Yeah. That was in parentheses. Got parentheses it. voice. You got to do your parentheses voice a little louder. In my Using the old standard of measurement. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, your phone is noisy. Damn it. You suck. You suck. You didn't silence it. You're a fail. Husband failed. <laughs> normally it's me. I well, gotta normally we're just so like my phone goes silent on its own after 10 o'clock. Oh, and, and almost normally we every record time late. we record, we're doing it after 10 o'clock. So I don't yeah. even have to worry about it. Yeah. And I did that on purpose so that like, you know, it wouldn't yeah. go off. But now we're, we're doing this one early. I know. It's only what nine wrong? o'clock. What's, what's wrong with us here? <laughs> We're ahead of the game. <laughs> it was 90 feet long. I started to say 90 foot long. Foots. Yeah. 90 feet long and 30 feet wide. <laughs> okay. The entry room at the front of the temple was 30 feet wide, running across. You've got to stop saying nope, feet. Nope. Nope. I'll <laughs> never stop. Running across the entire width of the temple and 30 feet high. Oh, my God. He overlaid the inside with pure ass gold. Pure ass gold, huh? Pure ass gold. Okay. Ding! Right. See it shine? Yeah. Except pure ass gold is malleable. Yeah. So. It is. That was but a But he foolish, overlaid it. That was foolish, though. But he, he, all he did was overlay it. But you it could just like, walk you know, up to it and, like, put your fingerprint in it. Pretty much. I mean, not that easy, but. But you, you know. could poke at it. Right. Yeah. You could work on it. Yeah. Definitely. Stupid. He paneled the main room of the temple with cypress wood that he got, you know, from that one king yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. room, I think. Right. I think that's very good. I yeah. think that was right. Yeah. Overlaid it with fine gold and decorated it with carvings of palm trees and chains. What's the point of getting fucking cedar? Like, nice wood, right? Mm-hmm. What's the point of getting that if you're just going to overlay it with fucking gold? You could have used, like, fucking anything. Pine wood or, you know, whatever. Just because you can. Okay. And it's the good shit. All right. Only the good shit for this king. I guess. I like how they're saying he did this and he did that. No, he fucking didn't. Right, right. He did not. He saw that it was done. He ordered it, make it so. He probably stopped by like once a week. Like, all right, better work faster. I mean, it would be like saying that Captain Picard flew the Enterprise. No, he didn't. His... His people did. He right. directed it. He oversaw it. He was the captain. He captained the ship. Right. But you don't say he flew the ship and he fired at people and he shot the weapons and he killed so and so and fought them Ferengis. I mean, it you say on the what enterprise. Context. You say the enterprise does, and you say he led. But if you're firing at somebody, he does give the order to fire at somebody. Okay, but you don't say that he killed them. You say. I'm just saying. Like, I don't know. I don't know. You could you could construe it that way. I don't know. But I'm just he, saying. Well, he didn't do it, though. Okay. He didn't. I mean, physically, no. But to be perfectly honest with you, neither did Wesley or, you know, Jordy or whoever's at the helm or Data. Right. Because they press a fucking button and then the electronics do it and that But they're it. the people involved, though. But still. No, you're getting too ridiculous. Oh, okay. All you're, right. you're, um... Parsing hairs. Okay. I don't like it when you do that. All right. That's silly. He decorated the walls of the temple with beautiful jewels. I'm glad they weren't ugly. And with gold from the land of Parvame. That place, yeah. I don't know where the fuck Parvame is. great place, yeah. He overlaid the beams, thresholds, walls, and doors throughout the temple. With gold. Oh, okay. His hands must be so dirty from all this work he's doing. Right, yeah. His hands must be rough. And he carved figurines, figures of cherubim on the walls. I think it was that master craftsman that did it. Yeah, if he did it himself, why did he need a master craftsman? Yeah, at least in the, uh, whatever book that was when they were talking about building the ark and Mm -hmm. the tabernacle, they at least gave credit to the craftsmen that were doing it. Yeah, yeah. Like, they didn't say Moses fucking did it. Right. You know? Right. He made the most holy place 30 feet wide, corresponding to the width of the temple, and 30 feet deep. Oh, my God. <laughs> you were I'll never stop me. ever. <laughs> he overlaid its interior with 23 tons of fine gold as opposed to coarse gold. Right. Yeah. The gold nails that were used. That is, like, so that's pointless asinine. and ridiculous. Weighed 20 ounces each. Mm. 
Okay. He also overlaid the walls of the upper rooms. How do you suppose you hammer a gold nail? Gold. Wouldn't that like kind of deform it you as you're nailing it? Use a gold hammer. Lead it for <laughs> each other. He made two figures. He himself, with his own two hands, made two figures shaped like cherubim. Overlaid them with gold. Gold. Yeah. And placed them in the most holy place. In the most holy place. Okay. Ooh, today when we were watching Supernatural, we learned about the most holy man. Yeah. They I needed mean, the blood sure. of the most holy man. Right. A most holy man. A most holy man. Yeah. And this is the most holy place. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. The total wingspan of the two cherubim feet. standing side by side was 30 feet. Hell yeah. I knew that. One wing of the first figure was seven feet long mm -hmm. and it touched the temple wall. I remember him building this. This is the same room where he built the sea. Yeah. And the other wing, also seven feet long, touched one of the wings of the second figure. Wait, it's the same room where the sea is? Or something like that, I don't isn't think it? that's true. No? No. I thought it was. In the same way, the second figure had one wing seven feet long that touched the opposite wall. The other wing, also seven feet long, feet... Oh, damn it. I almost thought you gave up. Nope. Touched the wing of the first figure. So, if you guys could just see me right now, I'm not he's happy. He's seething. He hates me <laughs> so much. I got to get my digs in where I can. So you just like I should have known better, just not to say anything about it, because then yeah. you would not. You would have forgot about it after like a couple of sentences. Yep. But now I'm now never it's stop a thing. Ever. It's, now a it's a thing. thing. Yep. Beats forever, guys. Mm. So the wingspan of the two cherubim side by side was thirty feet. Thirty feet. They stood on their feet and faced out toward the main room of the temple. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry, I made myself laugh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Whew. It's the little things. It's a, yeah. Oh. It's the little feet. <laughs> <laughs> Across the entrance of the most holy place, he hung a curtain. He himself yeah, right. made a fine linen decorated with blue, purple, and scarlet thread. That's why I needed somebody that could do blue, purple, and yeah. whatever, scarlet. Scarlet. But yeah. only, but except for that he did it. Right. But, you know, not the guy that he hired, mm -hmm. apparently. And embroidered with figures of cherubim. Okay. Okay, yeah. For the front of the temple, he made two pillars. He made two pillars <laughs> that were 27 feet tall, each topped by a capital Extending upward another seven feet. Wait, a what? A capital? Um, a capital. Have you ever learned about um, pillars, like Greek pillars? Yeah. In archaeology, the thing at the top oh, of the pillars okay. are capitals. I and, didn't know that. Like, there's different styles of them. Like, if there's something, they're Doric capitals. Okay. And if there's something else, I forget. But the capital is like the thing at the top. I missed that day in archaeology. In archaeology. Archaeology. <laughs> In whatever. Architecture. Architecture class. Yeah, geez. I learned about those in my Western Civ class in college. Okay. And yeah. I don't know why they stuck in my head. Got it. Yeah. Capitals. Capitals. Okay. Got top it. of pillar. Okay. Okay, so he, the pillars were um, an additional seven feet above the 27 feet of the column themselves. Okay. He made a network of interwoven chains and used them to decorate the tops of the pillars. He also made 100 decorative pomegranates. Man. You Sol know, those are my favorite. Solomon was busy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he attached them to the chains mm -hmm. himself with his own two hands. Yeah. This is bullshit the way that I know, phrased. right? <laughs> then he set up the two pillars at the entrance of the temple, one to the south of the entrance and the other to the north. He named the one on the south Jaquin and the one on the north Boaz. The end. Okay, man. <laughs> like, those workers he hired, he didn't even need them because he did the I whole know. fucking thing. I know. Why did he bother? Right? Yeah. I mean, it's he crazy. could really go out to the quarry. He didn't need 70,000 foreigners. Right? He could just dig Solomon it himself. just did it all himself. Yeah. Shit. Wow. It's crazy. What a guy. I mean, right? He's amazing. I bet he's still alive. I mean, guy like that. I mean, that. somebody that can do all that. Yeah. You can't, Surely he, probably he just doesn't die, forever. right? Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Well, that was... Okay. So, anyway... <laughs> That was uh, Second Chronicles chapter three, mm -hmm. and tomorrow we'll see what kind of feats uh, Solomon do does <laughs> in Second Chronicles chapter four. All right, see you guys. Yep, bye. Husband, wife. Do you know what today is? Uh, Turkey Day. No. 
No. No. Um, actually, uh, Americans killed the Indians Day. That, yes. Um, or not I, Indians, Native Americans. Yes. Sorry. Yes. I have seen things going around um, where people are calling it Thanks Taking Day. Thanks Taking Day? I yeah. like that. I yeah. like that. Yeah. So, happy American Thanks Taking Day, you guys. I mean, we are still going to be eating turkey, turkey today. So, it, so it is turkey day. I mean, I guess, but it's more about the family that we're going to be visiting than it is about the celebrating whatever this was originally based on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So It's just good so to take a minute to remember that this, we are on stolen land and... Um, yes, be grateful for what you have, but also think about others who, you know, have been put out because of the things our country has done to them. Right. And I like to think that we're celebrating mostly because we all collectively have a day off. That is true, too, because, <laughs> yeah, it's about one of the only days you get off all right, year. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, do you remember what happened yesterday in uh, the Bible? Yeah, Solomon basically built every fucking thing on the planet and mm-hmm. sourced all the things and except, you know, for the things that David did. He had golden but, nails and he hammered yeah, them. You're right. Yeah, and he, he probably cut the wood and, and he carved quarried the quarries and, and you know He sewed the things with all the colors. Oh, don't forget the uh what were they the pomegranates? He yeah, did the pomegranates. he did those yeah. all by himself. All by himself. He didn't even it was need all Solomon. He didn't need all those slaves or or craftsmen. Any of it. None nope. of it. Nope. He didn't need any of it. And you learned what capitals are. I did. I did. It's the top of the top column. of the pillar. Column. Column. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. That fucking thing. That fucking all right. thing. That was uh Second Chronicles chapter three. Sure as fuck was. And today we're gonna be getting into Second Chronicles chapter four. All right, let's go do this. Okie dokie. Okay, Second Chronicles chapter four. Okay. Solomon also made a bronze altar thirty feet long, thirty feet wide. And 15 feet high. Yeah, he did. (laughs) Then he cast a great round basin. He's building the sea. He's building the sea. 15 feet across from rim to rim called the sea. Yeah. I'm so excited. I don't know why. Are you? You're so excited about them feet in that basin? Mm Mm-hmm. And the sea. I'm excited about the sea. He's building the sea. Right. That's what a a basin's a thing that holds water. I'm excited about it. I don't know why, (laughs) but I am. It was seven feet deep and about 45 feet in Ah, circumference. You're killing me. I know. (laughs) You're killing me. You deserve it. No, I don't. No? I really don't. Okay, but I think you do, though. Mm -hmm. I bet they agree with me. Mm. It was encircled just below its rim. (laughs) Rim. (laughs) By two rows of figures that resembled oxen. Anytime I hear the word rim, I can only think of it in one context. Yeah. I can't help it. Okay. Okay. I'm sure that, that that needed to be covered today on Thanksgiving. Well, I mean, I'm the same whether it's a holiday or not. I don't yeah, really change. No, I, I got gotcha, you. So I got gotcha. you. Sorry if um, talking about the head of a penis is embarrassing right. for you on Thanksgiving, you guys. <laughs> there were about six oxen per foot all the way around, and they were cast as part of the basin. That's awesome. The sea was placed on a base of 12 bronze oxen. Okay. All facing outward. For the 12 tribes, probably. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, that's just my guess. Yeah. They faced, oh, three faced north, three faced west, three faced south, and how many do you think faced east? Three. Yep. That's good maths right there. That is good maths. And the sea rested on them. Yeah. The walls of the sea were about three inches thick. It's and pretty it's, thick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Its rim flared out like a cup and resembled a water lily blossom. Mm. It could hold about 16,500 gallons of water. That's a lot of gallons. That's so many gallons. Yeah. He also made 10 smaller basins for washing the utensils for the burnt offerings. So well, that's good. You don't have to wash them in the tub. You yeah, know? he doesn't want to swim around with right, right. fucking incense burners and shit. Yeah. He set five on the south side and five on the north. But the priests washed themselves in the sea. Okay. That's so weird to consider that people used to do, like, public 
communal bathing. They still do. There's still communal baths. I know. I know that. But I'm just, it's, it's so strange to me. I know that it's common in those communities and that I'm the weird one. I, <laughs> I know that. But I'm just, like, I want to be able to grasp it. And I, I just can't because I'm not part of that community. Got it. Got so, it. I mean, you know, do you think that if you were just picked up and transplanted into that kind of society that you would be able to right away be fine doing public communal bathing? Yes. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Why? I don't I don't have a pro- I, it is what it is. Oh my god. Got to bathe. Let's just do it. Oh my god. <laughs> I expected that you would be like, "Hell no," cuz you're kind of like anxiety and shy a little bit. And- Whatever. I'm I'm just like, whoa. No, nope, it'd be fine. I don't want to be naked with people. Mm. Nope. No, thank you. Okay. He then cast 10 gold lampstands according to the specifications that had been given, you know, by his dad. Right. And he put them in the temple. Five yeah. were placed against the south wall and five were placed against the north wall. He also built so 10 really tables. really important which mm-hmm. direction they were. Oh, yeah. Very important. Yeah. Very important. He also built ten tables and placed them in the temple, five along the south wall and five along the north wall. Then he molded 100 gold basins. Yeah, but he's still still pretty damn busy. Mm -hmm. He's doing all this shit, too. He's building so many things by himself with his own two hands. I didn't want to forget about it. Like, he is still doing all this. You know what I'm really noticing, though? We haven't heard from Residual David. No. Residual David is out the picture, apparently. He might finally be dead. Yeah, maybe. I mean... I might have jinxed us by bringing it probably, up, but probably. just thought I'd put it out there. Right. He then built a courtyard for the priests and also the large outer courtyard. He made doors for the courtyard entrances and overlaid them with bronze. I want a courtyard. Can I, I have a courtyard? I mean, I guess you could consider our backyard as a courtyard if you wanted it's to. It's not a courtyard. No, what defines a courtyard? I don't know. Maybe like stone paths and like trellis kind of ceiling and... I don't know. Oh, okay. Gardenry. Got it. I don't... You give me an exact definition. I'll see if I can make it happen. Okay. Okay. I will. I will. Yeah. The great bronze basin called the sea was placed near the southeast corner of the temple. Just oh, so you know, that's okay. where it was. Southeast corner. Kuram Abi also made the necessary wash basin, shovels, and bowls. So he did some stuff. So at last, Huram Abi completed everything King Solomon had assigned him to make for the Temple of God. Oh. The two pillars, the two bowl-shaped capitals on top of the pillars, the two networks of interwoven chains that decorated the capitals, the 400 pomegranates that hung from the chains on the capitals. Oh, so it wasn't Solomon. It wasn't Solomon. It was the the other guy. Yeah. And parentheses voice, two rows of pomegranates for each of the chain networks that decorated the capitals on top of the pillars. Okay. Okay, yeah. The water carts holding the basins, the sea, and the 12 oxen under it, the ash buckets, the shovels, the meat hooks, and all the related articles. Mm-hmm. Huramabi also made all these things of burnished bronze for the temple of the Lord, just as King Solomon had directed. The king, it's nice that he's finally getting credit, though. Yeah, you know? yeah, I'm glad of it. Yeah, the king had them cast in clay molds in the Jordan Valley between Succoth and Zarethan. Solomon used such great quantities of bronze that its weight could not be determined. Oh, there we go again. There with we those go again. Undetermined with the, weighing. I amounts. don't know how to weigh. Right. I don't know how to take a smaller portion, weigh it, and then do an approximation. <laughs> We haven't learned estimates yet. Mostly we just didn't want to weigh it. We invented the wheel, but we don't know how to estimate. Right, right. This is stupid. Yeah, These I agree. people were simple. They were, whatever. They did, None of this really happened the way they're saying it happened. They're, they're exaggerating shit. They're making things more It was the heaviest was. heavy that ever heavy. So I take very little stock in what was written here as to what actually happened. It was pretty fucking heavy. Right. I'm not saying that things didn't happen. Right. Maybe they did, you know? But the way that it's written, I don't think it came anywhere near that. Right. No, I totally agree. Solomon also made all the furnishings for the temple of God. 
the gold altar, the tables for the bread of the presence, the lampstands, and their lamps of solid gold to burn in front of the most holy place as prescribed, the flower decorations, lamps, and tongs, all of the purest gold, the lamp snuffers, bowls, ladles, and incense burners, all of solid gold, the doors for the entrances to the most holy place, and the main room of the temple overlaid with gold. The end. Okay. Lots of gold, gold and bronze. Gold and bronze and, and pomegranates. Yeah. And Solomon didn't do all the work. So nope. There we go. Ram Mabi did. Yeah. Yeah. By himself. But they sure tried to give Solomon the credit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, they did. I mean, if they if they didn't want to give him the credit, they would have just mentioned Huram Abi mm-hmm. at the beginning of all these chapters. Exactly. And said he would have done all of it. So. Mm-hmm. But whatever. Yep. All right. Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody, again. Happy... Um, American um, Thanksgiving. Uh, right, uh, America's um, Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was Second Chronicles chapter four. Sure as fuck was. And we'll be back as always tomorrow with on Black Friday. On Black Friday, even so you can listen to us real early mm-hmm. as you're watching all the people go out to buy all the shit. Yeah, because I ain't doing that crap. I ain't either. Second Chronicles chapter five tomorrow. All right, we'll see you guys then. Yep. Bye. Husband. Wife. Do you remember what happened yesterday? Yes, Solomon stopped taking credit for everything that Hiram Abi did. Yes, that is correct. I mean... The chronicler finally gave credit to the craftsman. Given that we're recording this on Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. or thanks Taking. Taking. Mm-hmm. Um, he stopped taking all the credit, and he started giving some of the credit nice. to Hiram Abi. Yes. So yes. that was nice of the chronicler to ascribe the credit where it was due. Yeah, exactly. I guess. Right. Eventually. So y'all are listening to this on Black Friday. Yeah. And I'm just going to tell you to um, keep it nice today. Be civil and treat your um, shopping helpers, your retail people, your waitresses. Treat them all right because they are tired and there are a thousand of you and one of them. Right. So, yeah. Be nice today, guys. Although Black Friday is not what it uh what it used to be. Yeah. I mean, Black That's Friday is no longer just the day after Thanksgiving. It's now like an entire 3 month Black long. Black Friday's turned into like the 12 days of Christmas. Yeah. You know. It's stupid. <laughs> it's really stupid. It really is. It really but is. there are still some people who go shopping and so True. my admonition stands. Behave, you guys. But at the very least, they've cut down on how many people get trampled on Black Friday. Yes, yes. No more so trampling. That's, that's a plus, you know. Yes. Yes. Right. Um, all right. So that was Second Chronicles chapter four. Sure as fuck was. And today we're gonna be getting into second, se- blah, blah, blah. Today second, we're gonna, yeah, go second ahead. Chronicles chapter five, fuck face. <laughs> Oh my All god. Right, let's go do this. Okay. Okay, so we are finishing up the furnishings for the temple. Okay? Oh boy, we get to see what yeah. kind of stuff they get. I mean, there's just like things. one little paragraph. Oh. It's a continuation of the last chapter. Okay. All right. So Solomon finished all his work on the temple of the Lord. Hiramabi. Yeah. Hiramabi. Finished all his work on the temple. Yeah. Of the Lord. Then he brought all the gifts his father, David. Oh, he came back. He came back. <laughs> Damn you, David. Why can't I quit Fucking you? Fucking residual David. <laughs> all the gifts his father, David, had dedicated. The silver, the gold, and the various articles. And he stored them in the treasuries of the temple of God. That's great. Okay, I just have to tell you guys, since this is a holiday weekend, um, I'll tell you a really nice story. So... Me and husband were standing out on our front porch as we do, solving all the world's problems with each other. And husband says, I think I want to start eating an apple more regular because I heard it um, helps with heartburn and, you know, helps you be healthier, blah, 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 blah. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. And I said, okay, yeah, that sounds good. I mean, you know, after all, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Right, right. You know, just make sure you don't eat the core or else you're going to grow an apple tree in your stomach. Right. And of course... Doesn't even, like, stop a second to talk about how stupid that is. Just says, um, yeah, and then I'd be Johnny Appleseed. 
And then right after that, we both start humming the same fucking song. And then Who's Johnny, she said. Who's Johnny? She said, "Yeah." And then we were like, "I love you." And then we were both like, "What the fuck song is that?" Right. And then he goes, "I think it's from Short Circuit." Yeah. And I was like, "Oh my god, you're right!" And then I was like, "It was a one-hit wonder with a really stupid, shitty video." And we were both right. And that's the story of how we are awesome and we are made for each other. And then we stood out on the porch and watched the video and listened to the song because, you know, you gotta. You gotta. That's what Googles are for, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So we found the great. song and it's by, what was it? LaBarge? Uh, something like that. LaDebarge. <laughs> something De, like that. De LaBarge. De LaBarge. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And it's, who is Johnny or who's Johnny? And One of those. Yeah. Just look up all those words right, yeah. and, and short circuit. About, especially if you didn't grow up in the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it really was, like, really obscure song. It was. But, I mean, if you saw Short Circuit, then yeah. you wouldn't know the song. Okay, but here's the thing. Like, me and husband, um, before we were married, when we were first, like, when we first moved in together, um, we would go to Walmart to do grocery shopping. And um, we would always stop in at the DVD section, and we would, like, look at the DVD <laughs> racks. And so, at one point, he was on one side, and I was on the other side, and we both go, oh, my God. And I was like, you got to look at this movie. And he was like, no, you got to look at this movie. And we we both turn around to each other and it was the same fucking movie. So not only is that crazy enough, it is a really obscure movie, which yeah. now that it's a little bit older, like there's more recognition for it. It's got a little bit more of a, a little like I've heard people talk about it, which really shocked me. But not much. OK, but it's Hudson Hawk. And, like, I have all my life, nobody else loves that movie. And same for husband. Right, Like, right. nobody else loves that movie. But for whatever reason, it just struck both of our funny bones. I mean, how can you go wrong with Bruce Willis playing a cat burglar singing Sinatra songs? I know, right? You just can't go wrong there. That's, like, the best fucking Wish thing ever. Star, right? I'm not saying it's a masterpiece, but no, it's no, a no, great no. movie. Yeah, it's so funny. And like I said, nobody else ever liked it. So we both look at each other in amazement. And <laughs> we just have these like odd little moments where things just, just fall together. Yeah. Like right. a movie or a song. And it's always something like really stupid and obscure. Right. Like one time he said, I'll be right back. And then we both go after these messages, we'll be right back. Which I don't know if you remember like Saturday cartoons. Right. So but that was like the commercial break. Right. Yeah. And I mean, it's just weird. That, that we, was in front of our kid and our kid looked at us like we were what aliens. What the fuck? Yeah, like pod people. So <laughs> that was our little Thanksgiving weekend gift to you guys. Yeah, there you go. That we are still in love, even though I just called him a fuck face. Yes. I mean, so. we called. I mean, she called me a fuck face a lot, so. But I, I also. In lovingly, affectionately. You oh, know, yeah, yeah, all yeah. That, in all so. the best ways possible, right, you're a fuckface. Yeah. Right. And I'm a dumb bitch. I mean, you know. By I'm my just... own by my own words. Nobody else is. Yeah, right. Nobody else better call me a dumb we, bitch. We are what we are. You yeah. Know? I'm a dumb bitch and you're a fuckface. <laughs> and we love each other dearly. And so I just wanted to tell you this fun story of how we. Both love Hudson Hawk and listen to an 80s song tonight. Yeah. 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 Sure. Okay. Anyway. I hope everybody's richer for knowing this now. I know, I know you guys feel better for it. You were worried. Think, yeah. You were right. worried. Because of the fuck face comment. Yeah. Yeah. And you were like, oh God. Right. They've been bickering. Yeah. No. no. That doesn't happen. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I mean, it does. It but does, only for like but... 30 seconds or so. And then so. we're like, shut up. You're yeah. so stupid. <laughs> right. We did all of our like major bickering when we were, you know, earlier in our relationship. When we hit like that five and seven year stretch, we like duked it out and oh, got man. it all done. Yeah. We had it out. Mm. Mm. But we're pretty much over that now. Yeah. And so. we were like, and done. Right. I ain't yeah. got time for that. We know each other too well. We're like, whatever. Fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And we have fun together. Yeah. 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 Okay. Here so we Bible? Go. Bible. Bible. It's just the Bible. So, I mean Bible. You know, I had to do something else for a minute. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Back to the Bible. <laughs> Solomon then summoned to Jerusalem the elders of Israel and all the heads of tribes, the leaders of the ancestral families of Israel. Aren't okay. you happy to know that? I'm Yes, I'm so happy to so know that. So he summoned the kings. Get over here, leaders. Yeah. They were to bring the Ark of the Lord's Covenant to the temple from its location in the city of David, also <laughs> known as Zion. So all the men of Israel, but not the women's. 
Yeah. Assembled before the king at the annual festival of shelters, which is held in early autumn. So this is well after the king's normally war. Right, right. Yeah. They've, so they've it took come them, home from war. It took, well, if I recall correctly, I thought it took them like 11 years to build the temple. Mm-hmm. So this was like, because we, we thought about that the last time. We were like, Did it only happen? Did it take till spring until fall? But right. then they were like, no, it was 11 years 11 later. 11 years later. Like that, yeah, so. yeah. When all the elders of Israel, blah, 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 blah. when all the elders of Israel arrived, the Levites picked up the ark. That's good because the last time a non-Levite picked up the ark, right. he tripped and he got smote. Well, they were carrying it on a cart, remember? Yeah. And they weren't supposed to be carrying it on the cart. They were supposed to use and the carrying And it wasn't Levites that, that were was handling to be it. Levites that were handling it. So. And also, don't fucking touch it. Right. Yeah. The priests and Levites brought up the ark along with a special tent. <laughs> you have a special tent. <laughs> <laughs> nice tent. And all the secret items that had been in it. Do you remember what's in it? Uh, well, if everything that's in there is supposed to be in there is in there, then you'd have the book of Moses or whatever, the book mm-hmm. of um, laws, the, the whatever law. the fuck it is. Yeah. The Torah. You would have the leftover manna. The jar of manna. Right. And um, Aaron's rod. Aaron's rod. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And the I don't, almond rod. Yeah. The almond joy rod. The almond joy stick. Yeah. I don't think anything else was put in there unless they like right. yeah. found special rocks along the way that they put in. Like, ooh, this one's shiny. I, I mean, I think that would be pushing your luck, right? You know? I mean, you wouldn't if, want to piss off the Lord, right? But if they thought it was special and like, this who is knows? pleasing in the Lord's eye. It all gets fucking burnt up anyway, so who yeah, cares? Yeah, who cares? Whatever. There, before the ark, King Solomon and the entire community of Israel sacrificed so many sheep, goats, and cattle. So many. That no one could keep count. Oh my God, not a single person could count that high back then. That's really sad. They didn't even have an abacus that could work with that math. It feels so bad for these people not to be able to count. It's hard. And and or weigh. They can't weigh things. They can't count things. It must have been really difficult to function back then. It's amazing that we have the internet today how did we progress with I mean, right? from people that couldn't even count yeah to where crazy. we are today it's crazy i mean we just sent shit back to the moon you know it strikes me that we're trusting the word of people who couldn't even count i know right you know like people who are religious or are, are, are trusting and people who couldn't count they couldn't count motherfuckers <laughs> <laughs> then the priests carried the ark of the lord's covenant into the inner sanctuary of the temple The most holy place. Most holy. Not the holy place. The most holy place. Right, right. And placed it beneath the wings of the cherubim. That were 30 feet across. Mm -hmm. Feet. (laughs) Feet. If you could see his face. (laughs) The cherubim spread their wings over the ark. It no, sounds, no, they were already spread. I know, but it's it sounds a fucking like piece of metal. It sounds like the way they phrase it, it's like the metal statue <laughs> right? fucking opened up it, it its expanded wings. Expanded its wings. No, it was already fucking no, built they, that way. You the idiots. cherubim, whose wings were already spread over the ark, formed a canopy over the ark and its carrying poles. Great. Okay. Okay. That's awesome. It did not spread its wings. No, no okay. spreading of wings. Its wings were spread. Right. Yeah. Hiramabi. Yeah. Spread the wings when he fucking built this room and made that thing. He's the man. Right? These poles were so long that their ends could be seen from the holy place, which is in front of the most holy place. But not from space. You can't see them from space. And not from the outside. No. No. They are still there to this day, motherfuckers. False. (laughs) I mean, to the day as of the day they wrote When they wrote wrote it, maybe. Yeah, okay. But you know what? The chronicler wrote this after the Babylon. And so he was exile. lying. He was wrong. He was lying yeah. or wrong or or they or? were still there and we don't know what happened to them. No, they got still. melted down. I know. I know, but like if we're are taking we... if we're taking his account, okay, he's so saying they're still there. Are we pretending then that maybe the ark was so well hidden that they never found it? Is that what we're supposed to pretend? I don't know. Because I don't buy it. These people couldn't even fucking count. And you're telling right, me that they right. could hide it? Yeah. I, you're probably... I mean, I think I think this was just... Why would you write that, though? Why would you write that you, it's still there to this day if you could be proven wrong just on a glance? I don't know. That doesn't make any sense, right? Do you think that it, as he wrote this that it was still there? I mean, it's it's possible, I guess. I, and I'd, he I'd be knew curious. where it was? It'd be, it, it's possible. Like some Levites and the Chronicler... So the chronicler was probably a Levite. Or maybe to the best of his knowledge, it was still there. Maybe, okay. you know, maybe there were stories going around, hey, they never touched that. It's still, it's the most holy place. Nobody obviously could get in there, so it's still there, right? Or or was it quote unquote common knowledge the way it's today, quote unquote common knowledge that there is so much hidden away in the Vatican? 
Maybe. Like maybe. that kind of thing where he's like, yeah, it's totally there to this day. It's just that when they talked about the Babylonian exile, those, like, those fuckers took everything and melted it all down. They were so thorough. So like a whole temple made of gold and shit and bronze. I just don't see them leaving any of that there. Yeah. I mean, what did you do? Bury it right quick? I just right? don't believe you. Right. Or set so, up booby traps that were good enough to like keep the Babylonians out. Why didn't you just fucking hide in there? Yeah. I mean, I don't no, get it. I just don't buy it. I don't buy it. The Chronicler wrote this with an agenda, don't forget. Right. So right. he's trying to convince them, yeah, it's totally still there. But why would I just, I'm trying to wrap my head around saying something that you could obviously prove wrong. Because the common um, person coming out of the Babylonian exile couldn't prove it wrong. He, Unless they were somebody that was coming back to live in Jerusalem or whatever. But that person coming back from Jerusalem might not know where it's hidden. All right. Only All right. the special team did. Got you it. Know? Got it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't I, know either. I'm just saying, I don't think it was there. Got it. Nothing was in the Ark except the two stone tablet. Oh, we forgot about the stone tablet. Shit. God damn it. Shit. Except the two stone tablets that Moses had placed in it at Mount Sinai, where the Lord made a covenant with the people of Israel when they left Egypt. Wait. Mm-hmm. He's saying nothing was in the ark except the tablets. Well. And I mean, the manna and the fucking rod they, and the Torah. But remember they started they started leaving some of those things off as they went along. Yeah. But where'd they go then? Well, I mean. And no, in my heart and in my mind, those are still. You can't have it both ways. Either you know where the fucking ark is and all that shit is still in it because you kept it all together. Or there was. Nothing left because the Babylonians took that shit and they took it all, including everything that was in it. Right. right. So they just forgot to mention the shit. Right. Okay. Yep. The manna is still in there to this day. (laughs) Then the priests left the holy place. All the priests who were present had purified themselves, whether or not they were on duty that day. They scrubbed their balls all clean. Yeah. And the Levites who were musicians, Asaph, (laughs) Heman, Judithan... And all their sons and brothers were dressed in fine linen robes. Fine. Yeah. And stood at the east side of the altar playing cymbals, lyres, and harps. You know That's what? That's nice. Every time I hear the word fine, though, I cannot help but think now, like forever, for the rest of my life, it will remind me of how Obama was talking about his wife and said, and she is still fine. <laughs> like, he is so in love with his wife, and he has zero problem talking about how gorgeous she is and how smart like he just does nothing but lift her up you know what i mean right and he called his wife fine and that just i don't know why i just love it yeah i'm i'm a fool i'm a sap for love (laughs) okay 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 so they're fine they got their fine robes on and yeah and their musical instruments but not their saxophones right they were joined by 120 priests they could count that high yeah who are playing trumpets Oh, the, the priests tr- can play trumpets and be priests, huh? Mm-hmm. That's they special. are, um, what did they call it earlier? Multi-talented? Oh, I was going for the... Ambidextrous. No, <laughs> no. No, whatever. I can't remember now, so whatever. Okay. They were, like, very talented, very... Um, Master craftsmen? No, never mind. Skilled. Yeah, it was something like that, but, like, they called them some... Like, we were joking about it, because they were um, something... I can't remember. I can't remember what it was That's now. so anticlimactic. They were, they were describing the, the musicians and stuff, and they were saying they were very something or other. Very very good, great, and awesome. <sighs> That's not it. Okay, I don't know the word that you're I trying know, to say. I know, I know. My, my, my mind's failing me at the moment, so okay. I apologize. They were most excellent. <laughs> <laughs> the trumpeters and singers performed together in unison. Wow, not all jumbled up. To praise and give thanks to the Lord. Oh, I would hate to be the singer that was off key that day, I can tell you. (laughs) Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, but not saxophones, they raised their voices, la, 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 and praised the Lord with these words. Uh They were very capable or capable. Oh, remember? yes, yeah. yes. Sorry, okay. it was bugging me. So they me. were not excellent. They, they were, were not, merely right. very capable. Yeah, right. That's, okay. what, that's what I was going for. I take the back very everything I said. The I was eluding me. I couldn't come up with it. Take it back. Yeah. Take it back. Okay, so um, they were singing these words. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. He is good. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, let me sing it to Johnny. (laughs) He is good. His faithful love endures forever. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's way better. 
At that moment, a thick cloud filled the temple of oh, the Lord. Oh, man, you got to hold that in, man. <laughs> the priests could not continue their service because of the cloud. God damn! Man, that is one stank-ass fart. For the glorious presence of the Lord filled the fucking temple of God. The end. <laughs> Yeah, it did. I, 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 whenever I fart, I'm, just, I'm filling this room with the glorious presence of God. Mm, mm-hmm. I mean, you saw you saw those studies that said that methane helped reduce Alzheimer's. Yeah. And so for like, I don't know, two weeks, every time we farted, we were like, you're welcome. Just, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, I'm a child. I love you. Love you. All right. That was Second Chronicles chapter five. It sure as fuck was. And tomorrow will be Saturday, mm-hmm. so we're gonna be back with Q and A Saturday. And then on Sunday we're gonna be here with the Sacrilegious Book Club, followed up by the weekly replay. And then on Monday we will be back with Second Chronicles chapter six. Awesome. Bitches. We'll see you guys then. Okay, bye. Husband. Wife. Do you know what today is? I do. And I know we're running late today. We are. And it's my fault. But it's kind of not my fault because um, I got sick from being around people who are sick over Thanksgiving holiday. Yeah, but you're like a sponge for sick. Yeah, that's still not my fault. (laughs) Like, it'd be one thing if I was a straw and I was actively sucking it up. Then it would be my fault. Right, right, right. It actively wasn't my fault right and if i could have stayed home i would have yeah so when you say it's not my fault now sure so anyway (laughs) so what is today today is q and a saturday wow (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) i told you (laughs) yeah yesterday um i pretty much slept all day i had fever and um i vomited twice and i slept a lot today and i didn't have fever but i did vomit again earlier today and now you all know and now you all know yeah and then we found out uh from your brother that some of his kids are sick right and that's that's not surprising but that's probably where i got it right i'm just saying they're always sick they're always sick they came to thanksgiving the next day i was sick and there you have it right right so all right did you say the Q and A bit? Yeah, we're doing set Q and A. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> All right. And what are we covering today? Okay, so I had some questions about the tribe of Dan because we had mentioned that that's where you go to get your liberal arts degree. Right. And Dan. I mean, it's Dan. Yeah. And we love Dan. Dan the man. And so I thought we would look up a little bit about him and his tribe. Okay. So we're we're going into Dan today, huh? Just a little. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. All right, well, let's uh, go get into this. Okie dokie. So, Tribe of Dan. Yeah. Okay, before we get into Dan, I need to talk about the 10 lost tribes of Israel. There's 10 lost tribes of Israel? Remember how God swept them away? Yeah. They're actually called... The Ten Lost Tribes of Israel. But did we ever learn about them at all? It's Did they name them? It's... Um, I thought there was 12. There was 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. Ten of them were swept away, and they are referred to as the Ten Lost Tribes of Israel. Oh. And I came across that during my studies of Dan, because the tribe of Dan is one of those ten. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So, so the ten are ten that we know of, mm-hmm. just... They no longer exist as a clan, thing, tribe, whatever. They got swept away. Swept away. Yeah. Got it. God used his vacuum cleaner on them. He swept them. Got it. Got it. In Ohio parlance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so in 930 BC, the 10 northern tribes formed the independent kingdom of Israel in the north. Okay. And then the two other tribes, Judah and Benjamin. Right. They set up the kingdom of Judah in the south. Right. Right? Yeah. So and obviously, as far as the Bible is concerned, they're the more important ones. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So following the conquest of the northern kingdom by the Assyrians in 721 BC, um, the 10 tribes were gradually assimilated by other peoples and thus disappeared from history. Oh. So 
like basically the Babylonian exile thing happened yeah. and they just they They're were gone. gone. They were done. Bye bye. Yeah. Yeah. So the book of Revelation, one revelation, as opposed to how I've referred to it in the past as multiple revelations. Right, right. Yeah. The book of one revelation <laughs> mentions the twelve tribes of Israel, but the selection does not include the names of Ephraim and Dan even though those are two of the 12. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It has been suggested that this could be because of their pagan practices. Ooh. Classical rabbinical writers concluded that Dan was very much a black sheep. Dan was the bad boy. He was bad. He yeah. was a black sheep. Dan is portrayed as having hated Joseph, you know, his the youngest brother. Yeah. Um, with the multicolored technical of goodness who became the yeah. right-hand man of Pharaoh in Egypt. Right, right. Right. He so, was like, was he one of the ones that wanted to sell him right off? He's like, yeah, not only that, yeah. um, he's act- Dan is actually the one that invented the idea of deceiving Jacob by smearing Joseph's coat oh. with the blood of a goat. Yeah, he hated Joseph. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So in upcoming books of the Bible that we haven't read yet, we're going to see that the north of Canaan is associated with darkness and evil. Mm. Okay. And that's okay. that's where Dan is specifically. Yeah. Um, rabbinical sources treated Dan as the archetype of wickedness, which has even huh. led to some people proposing that the Antichrist will eventually come from <laughs> specifically the tribe of fucking Dan. Now we got to get our roots figured out, see if we kind of, you know, have any Dan in us. Well, um, I did not keep um, the list. There's a whole list of people who claim to have come from the tribe of Dan. Really? Yes. The Danish is one that people think because of the similarity of name and all of that, um, that they descended from the tribe of Dan. I like the Danish people. I know, right? They're good people. Yeah. I mean, I like Dan. You know, we like like Dan so far in the Bible. Sure, sure. They don't seem like such bad people. There's also a group of Ethiopian Jewish people who are... Um, supposed to be descended from the tribe of Dan. Okay. That's like the other direction. Right, right. So there's like a whole slew of people that are supposed to be descended from the tribe of Dan. Okay. All, all different shades of people. <laughs> all right. different right. locations geographically. Right. So yeah. they disappeared, but did they? Right. And a belief persists that one day the 10 lost tribes will be found. <laughs> Just so you know. There they are. We just misplaced them for thousands of years. Found it. <laughs> Where have you guys been? Man. Remember when we missed you. Remember when our, our kiddo was like a little one and would um misplay something or would play peekaboo and go, Dad is Yes. yes. <laughs> That's what's gonna happen. We're gonna right. find him and we're gonna go, Oh, Dad is <laughs> Right. Yeah. So that is all I could really find about the tribe of Dan and Dan himself. There was nothing listed about how a lot of artisans seem to come from them. Sure. Okay. Um, so that. But I mean, if they were like the bad, you know, the black sheep, right? Right. We're not going to give boys, them a lot of bad credit. People, whatever. Like that tends to be where artisans come from. I know. I was thinking that you too. Know, like they're always looked down upon. Like. Oh, you damn artisans over there! You you can't you, get your shit together and make get that's good. That's not jobs. a real job. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. You get your ass to works. Mm-hmm. We go, like corporate America. Yeah. Go get a real job. Go punch that clock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Nine to five, baby. Damn you, Dan. But not just nine to five. You better love that extra um, bonus time. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. You don't get OT. Yeah. Because you're not allowed to call off. Right. Yeah. Who needs a union? Right. Fuck off. Mm -hmm. Work 24-7. All the time. And be glad of it. Be grateful. Yeah. You don't need to pee. Right. You just bring a cup. Yeah. Stupid. So the only other thing that I found about them was their primary trade characteristic was seafaring, which was very very unusual for the Israelite tribes. They were the only ones, but they lived along the Mediterranean coast, so okay. that's kind of why. Yeah. And the tribe is said to have stayed on their ships with their belongings. Oh. Which, yeah. I don't know how I feel about that. Like, did they, though? Cause I don't know. I mean, nobody liked them, so maybe they were guarding that they're shit. Like, they're like, these fuckers are going to take our shit if we don't just stay here. Well, and they kept traveling further and further north because they kept getting pushed up north. Got it. Like, because uh, the Philistines... we're going to take this land, so... Uh, yeah, just uh, 
move on along, yeah. Well, the Philistines were south of them and kept pushing them upward. Oh, okay, And okay. north of them was other tribes of Israel. And Israel's like, uh, get lost. So You if, can't have our land, so just either yeah. fight them or go away. So they kind of went away. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> They're like, we're just going to stay on our ships. Y'all can fuck off. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know what happened to them. I don't know where they went. They may show up again someday. They probably like one day they're like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just sail other places and leave these fuckers behind and take our shit with us and peace out. And if the earth is flat, maybe they fell off the edge. Right. You never know. know. Right. Uh So that is it for the tribe of Dan. That's all I got. Okay. Well, that was interesting. I I appreciate that. Yeah. I we always joke about the tribe of Dan whenever they come up because you know Dan. Dan. You know, just it just sounds it's so it's so simple and plain. It's weird. All these names I can't pronounce, and then there's Dan. There's Dan. Yeah. 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 Well, I like this because I'm always going down rabbit holes, and there weren't any specific questions because, again, we're just replaying old material. Yeah. But I just was like, let's let's see if there's anything about Dan. So, rabbit sure. hole. Yeah. You rabbit hole. I like rabbit holes. Yeah. 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 Did uh, I answer a question? No. No, but you made it fun. Did I and learn a thing? We have yes. to talk about Dan some more, so I know. it's always I knew you'd fun like to talk that. about Dan. I knew you'd like that. It's, All right. it's too bad there's not like SEO in podcast voices. <laughs> like anytime somebody searched Dan after this episode, they'd be like, Dan, that's where we gotta they're talking about Dan over there. All the time. Dan Dan Dan. Danny de Dan Dan Dan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much, and uh, sorry this one came out late today. But it's still on the correct day. It is still on the correct day. It's still Saturday as we're recording, and you are going to put it out. That's right. You the guys. second we're done. Yeah. I'm putting out. Well, I got to you know do some things, but yeah. yeah. The oh, second, after that, after the second I'm done with that, yeah. then it'll be out. Yeah. So. Not done recording, done fixing it up. Right. So you know, like, whatever. How long is this episode? 12 minutes. Yeah. 12 minutes prior to this, we were at least, you know, doing podcast shit. Yeah. If you, if you got it right away. Yeah. So there you exactly. go. All right. Um, we will be back tomorrow with our, um, sacrilegious book club. That's the one and our weekly replay. Mm -hmm. And then of course on Monday, we'll be back with second Chronicles chapter six. All right. We'll see you guys. Yep. Bye. Husband. Wife. Do you know what today is? I do. Are you going to tell me what today is? (laughs) No, you're supposed to tell me. It's Sunday. What is on Sunday? Sacrilegious book club. There we go. So when I say, do you know what today is? You're supposed to say, yeah, it's Sunday. And then I say, that's oh. right. And then I say what Sunday is. You should have covered that with me before we started the podcast then. Well. Because I just, I'm reacting and I'm like, you're supposed to say that thing. And then you didn't say the thing. You're just asking me. I'm like, yeah, I know what today is. Duh. I Okay. <laughs> well, if I planned ahead, that wouldn't be very us. Now would it? It would not. It, it would not. <laughs> So we are still in the book, A Treasury of Jewish Folklore, and then subtitled Stories, Traditions, Legends, Humor, Wisdom, and Folk Songs of the Jewish People, edited by Nathan Asubel. Okay. And in the past, we covered Jewish salt, and now we are in the second section, which is heroes. We're talking about wise men. Fucking wise men. You're a wise ass. (laughs) All right, let's go ahead and get on into this. Okie dokie. Okay, so wise men. Wise men. And remember we talked before about how wise men and wisdom and knowledge is what the Jewish people consider your greatest asset, your greatest right. gift. Yeah. So... That's why it's such a big fucking deal. That's why Solomon was such a big fucking deal. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Because he's the wisest. Actually, I have a story about him I'm going to read today. I mean, it only makes sense in the mm-hmm. wise men section, you exactly. know? Exactly. So. so, I didn't note last time that under wise men, it is further broken down into wise and learned men mm. and then parables. Okay. okay. So, there is one story under the wise and learned men story or section that i'm going to read before we move on to parables okay and it's called why jerusalem was destroyed on page 55 okay god's a dick pretty much that's my answer pretty much okay ready yeah why was jerusalem 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 (laughs) 
Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> right, yeah. Leave that in. <laughs> yeah, well done. <laughs> Why was Jerusalem destroyed, asked the sages of Israel. Just, Jerusalem. Oh okay, stop. <laughs> I can't. Jerusalem was destroyed only because of the desecration of... <laughs> okay. Let me, you can't read today. Well, okay, let me explain. So, um, I was supposed to have a bridge put in, and the temporary that they put in while they're making the mold for the um, the bridge, yeah. um, the temporary popped off, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So... And I still don't have the bridge put in for another week, but between now and then... So now you have a speech um, impediment. Yes, actually, I do. Um, you probably haven't noticed it much because you don't notice things, but there's a really, really sharp piece of tooth that has, for the last week since mm -hmm. it popped off, been slicing my tongue. Mm. So That's exciting. I have a little bit of a lisp, and um, it's getting worse while I... Read this book. <laughs> yeah, while I while I wait for my my bridge to be put I gotcha, in, I gotcha. so I'm like, yeah, so, um, so basically, we're asking guess for your question. We're, we're asking for forgiveness. I <laughs> Please always, forgive us, listeners. I always ask for forgiveness because I'm always fucking up, and there's always a reason. Right, right. <laughs> okay, let's start over here. Ready? Okay, I'm ready. Why was Jerusalem destroyed? Asked the sages of Israel. Yeah. Jerusalem was destroyed only because of the desecration of the Sabbath. Jerusalem was destroyed only because the morning and the evening prayers were abolished. Jeru abolished? Mm. Jerusalem was destroyed only because the children of the schools remained untaught. Jerusalem was destroyed only because the people did not feel shame towards one another. Jerusalem so let me, let, me, let me just stop here. Mm -hmm. God destroyed Jerusalem because... Mm -hmm. People weren't being taught about him mm -hmm. and because they weren't worshiping him. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, I'm going to kill you and I'm going to make this, well, I'm going to destroy you. What they are saying is that Jerusalem was destroyed through us, not by God. We destroyed Jerusalem. Oh, right. That's what they're saying. Okay. All right. Um, did not feel shame, blah, blah, blah. Jerusalem was destroyed only because no distinction was drawn between the young and the old. Jerusalem was destroyed only because one did not warn or admonish the other. Jerusalem was destroyed only because men of scholarship and learning were despised. Jerusalem was destroyed only because there were no longer men of faith and hope in her midst. Mm. Other sages of Israel said, Jerusalem was destroyed only because her laws were founded upon the strict letter of the Torah and were not interpreted in the way of mercy and kindness. This is a lot of reasons that are only the reasons. Just That's saying. kind of the point. <laughs> That's kind of the point. From the day that the temple was destroyed, men of sound judgment were cut off. Confusion of thought prevailed, and the heart did not speak. I'm sorry, the heart did not seek after purity, but decided according to appearances. The shedding of blood profanes the holy soil, and in is an offense against the divine presence. Hmm. It was because of the shedding of blood that the holy temple was burnt. Okay. I, I just they don't they shed blood in the fucking holy temple like they do sacrifices and shit. So it just doesn't really strike me as whatever. Okay, you're being like really I'm being, yeah, I'm being You're not I'm, understanding I'm, the spirit of I'm this sorry, like I'm sorry. on purpose. I apologize. And I just, I, I read this because it kind of strikes me as very prescient. Like, yeah, no, it does. I mean, there are definitely parts of it other than the faith and the whatever. Well, but, okay, you know. but that's what I was trying to say was that Christians use many of the same reasons for today. Like, there's no prayer in school and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And that's why the world sucks. Right. But also, we atheists or agnostics or humanists or free thinkers secular whatever yeah we use similar reasoning why the the world is going to shit we have no shame anymore and we have no kindness and empathy toward each other it just strikes me that we all use similar reasoning and we're not all wrong no we're not all wrong i mean yes there are things that are that cause the world to fall apart but that does not mean that so when you invoke god as part of that though then you allow for someone else to throw on other meaning to that. Well, and, sure. 
that's part of the issue as well. No, yes, definitely, definitely. I, I wasn't trying to say that every single point mentioned here was correct. I was I was interested in this because it was so similar to so many different arguments by so many different people of so many different creeds. Well, and it strikes me also as part of this, like part of their issue with things falling apart is that the lack of um, instruction, the lack of mm -hmm. learning. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's exactly what, you know, religious people don't want from you. They want you to unlearn what you're learning, you know, so. You mean Christians. Christians, not... yes. And I'm, I'm speaking from a very American sense of this as yes. far as what I'm going from. Yeah, so. yeah. But, you know, there's there's definitely I, an I think... unlearning of science. There's an unlearning of, yes. you know, that, that they expect of you in order to be part of the club. I, I feel like this piece here why jerusalem was destroyed is a very like i think we can relate to this piece more than christians can christians would take all of these points and turn them wicked and ugly right you know what i mean whereas i relate to it on a very the way you said um science and learning and education and empathy and kindness and love sure like it it's just interesting to me no i think it, i mean so at some level i think that um you know we're talking about thousands of years ago, right? With mm -hmm. early Judaism and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that they were on the right track for learning and for questioning and things like that. Absolutely. Now, they didn't have a good basis in science or anything like that to understand the world that they lived in. So there there goes God. There's God. Right. That's where God is, right? right. God is in those gaps that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's sad that we kind of stopped as right. a society for a long periods of time along the way since then. Mm -hmm. You know, we had the dark ages. We had, you know, we, we they're just, we, we have right now, you know, we, we keep have, having these periods of unlearning and, yeah. and dark ages that. And I think ultimately that's what's stopping progression. That's what's mm -hmm. stopping us from moving forward as a world, as a society, as a, as humans. I so. find it interesting that in this period of unlearning, we are going back to the moon. Yeah, no, you know, there's, I mean, one so, step forward, two steps back. You yeah, know, like that's, it's just so interesting. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. And, you know, even in all of the, the problems that we're having with religion and politics and everything in the United States, it's still um, hopeful mm -hmm. that we have such support for progressive issues, you know, as a, as a whole, as a, right. as a percentage, right. you know, like percentage-wise – we support most of the right things, in my opinion. Well, so. I mean, the fact that LGBTQ rights are being secured even by the right at right. this point, I mean, everything else is falling apart, but yet still one little piece is moving forward. And that's where you get the hope. Right. You know? Right. That's where there's always a light. And you have to keep moving toward the light, even if you know yourself that you're never going to reach it. Well, and I think you, I mean, if you take, we grew up in the 80s, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the world has changed significantly for the better. Yeah. Other than certain things. Climate change, obviously, we, we fucked that up, right? You know? Yeah, absolutely. But societal norms have changed for the better, generally speaking, mm -hmm. you know? And some. Some, some. Some I, that's what have I'm saying, changed generally significantly. Speaking. That's what I'm saying, generally speaking. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you take history in 40 to 50 year swaths then we're moving in the correct direction it just doesn't always feel like it in the moment in the moment right and and we need the the goal i think is to keep us from backsliding further mm -hmm. so that we don't lose the momentum that we still have right and so. i think that you have to take yourself out of the moment sometimes to have that hope and you have to look at the larger picture Definitely. as we keep slouching forward. Because it's easy to get lost in the, the daily news narratives that it is. You know, tell us we suck, we're great, we suck, we're great. Whatever you're listening to, I'm, you know, it, yeah. there's always somebody out there screaming about something. So, yeah. including us. Sure. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're know. here daily but, screaming about shit. Well, yeah, that's, so. that's why this piece spoke to me more on a personal level than it did on a for our podcast specifically what we're doing right you know trying to read um jewish folklore yeah. like it spoke to me more on a personal level than on a um for our podcast level right and right. i just felt like it was worth reading yeah sure so. definitely okay so that wraps up that section the next section we get into is parables and the intro to that is on page 56 and 57 
And I just took some quotes from that intro, and I will read them now. Okay. Of all elements in Jewish folklore, the parable is probably the most distinctly Jewish. Okay. Which, okay, I thought that was interesting. Mm -hmm. Pentateuch has only five parables, but they abound in the Agata, the Midrash, and in many books of the Apocrypha, and in most Jewish mm. medieval literature. Hmm. Okay. So, I thought... That was interesting to yeah, know. Right. Considering that it's it's so important, but the Pentateuch itself, five books of the Bible only has five parables. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here's a quote. No doubt with the intellectual snobs in mind, the teachers of the people wrote admonishing in the Agata, do not despise the parable. With a penny candle, one may often find a lost gold coin or a costly pearl. By means of a trifling, simple parable, one may sometimes penetrate into the most profound ideas. I mean, I think parables help you bypass your, um, your, they help you bypass your, um, what do you call it? Your ideas that you have set in your head, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm, I was trying to come up with a word. I'm going to stop because, you know, whatever. Preconceived notions. Pre thank you. Yes. Yeah, that's the one. Thanks. <laughs> yep. Um, so I think it helps you bypass that by not jumping out immediately and saying what you're -uh. trying to teach, you know, like yeah. it, it makes you think about it in a roundabout way and say, huh? Well, I don't know if you recall, but last week there was a story that I read regarding the difference between truth and parable. Yeah. And that parable is just truth in better clothing. Right. Right. And it, it is easier to swallow. It's more acceptable. Agreed, and I don't know that they're always truths necessarily, right? But they do make you think, regardless. Yeah. So yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of like we can talk about statistics, but it's always better to have that personal story, that anecdote, that that one person, yeah, who actually endured the hardship that you're trying to discuss to make it more personal. Definitely. And what is a an anecdote or a personal example? Other than a parable or right. a truth dressed up in nice clothing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So according to the universally accepted tradition, it was King Solomon mm -hmm. who, quote, invented the parable. Invented it, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, he was so motherfucking wise. Man, that is a... He invented it. According, according to universally accepted tradition. Got it. So not necessarily right. what happened, just it gets attributed to him because it's fun. I mean, fun. there weren't a lot of books back then, you know? Mm -hmm. And he happens to be in one of those books. Right. So, I mean, I think he might have a leg up here given the sure. amount of history that was done to that point that was written down. Sure. So. Yep. But remember, you had mentioned Solomon as yeah, being yeah. the wise guy. The wisest. Mm-hmm. So... Very often, the parable was told not so much to instruct as to offer solace solace to the Jewish people, okay. which that also makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So now I have a couple of stories from that section. Okay. Which I will read. Let me find them in <laughs> my massive get to the page. tome. Yeah. yeah. Right. Actually, I'm only reading one parable today. Oh, just one. Just okay. one. All right. Because I, I should have split these up better um, because... We'll still be doing parables next week, and then we will also get into the ancient art of reasoning next week. Okay. Um, I should have just done these like a miniature section at a time. Got but it. I didn't look at the table of contents. The table of contents is so massive. Yeah. That I just didn't look at all the breakdowns. Sure. So anyway, page 58, the poor man's miracle. And this is adapted from the Abid. And... I don't know if you remember, but that's one of the supplemental um, writings um, that rabbis wrote as explanations and interpretations to, like, the Agata and the Midrash that right. they wrote um, as... Um, supplemental to the yeah. Torah and the whatever. The, the, the well, the second the... law. Right. Not the, yeah. not the Torah, but right, the other right, right. one. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think the Midrash was the second law, and then all the others are supplemental to that. Got it. So... Got it. Um, okay, so this one's called The Poor Man's Miracle. No one showed any compassion for the poor man as he went from house to house begging for a coin or a crust of bread. Many a door was slammed in his face, and he was turned away with insults. Therefore, he grew despondent. 
One wintry day, as he was trudging through the slippery streets, he fell and broke his leg. Thereupon they took him to a hospital. When the people of the town heard that a poor stranger had been taken to the hospital, suffering from a broken leg, they began to feel very sorry for him. Some went to comfort him. Others brought him good things to eat. When he left the hospital, they furnished him with warm clothes and gave him a tidy sum of money. Before the poor man left town, he wrote to his wife, Praise God, dear wife, a miracle happened. I broke my leg. <laughs> and this moral, all of these have a moral attached to them. Okay, and the no, moral, I love it. I know. The moral of this one is most people would sooner help one who has fallen than help keep him from falling. I Yeah. I mean, that and that's true, true today. And today yeah. yeah. That's why I chose that one. Yeah. So. No, that's great. I, I find that the two stories that I chose to read that were written hundreds and hundreds of years ago mm -hmm. are still so fucking true today. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's absolutely true. Yep. And, and even, you know, one of the things that I really, it just bothers me, but I, like, you know, you know, this is a truism. And that's that, like, even churches, like, if you don't show up in your Sunday best, mm -hmm. they're going to turn you away, you know? Not not turn you away, but you definitely will be looked down upon, at the very least, yeah. you know? Yeah, So, like, if a homeless person walked into their church on a Sunday, mm -hmm. they're not going to get a warm welcome. They're not going to no, get they help. Get they're not going to get... I mean, they can show up... They're, they're welcome to show up on the day when they're giving out food to look good for the whatever social media is and all that kind of mm -hmm. crap, right? For the photo op. For the photo op, yeah. For the, do it for the gram. But don't invade their personal, personal, you know, yeah. like, service. Jeez, their club. That's crazy. Their Sunday club meeting. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, you, yeah, it's it's very true. Like, when and, and when tragedy befalls somebody, whether they're poor, rich, well, mostly poor, when they're poor, people will reach out and help. But... If you just ask for help before tragedy has hit, mm -hmm. knowing even that there might be an impending tragedy coming, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people are not willing to help. Right. You have to already be in the earthquake. You can't right. ask yeah. for yeah. money to like build up your house, you know, to prevent it from falling in on and you. And that even applies to our politics. We don't like, you know, when COVID hit, we had let our um, medical supplies as a nation go to such levels that we weren't prepared for it, you know? Like, so that because, we had to tell people, don't wear masks because we need our medical staff to have that PPE. Right, because we don't prepare ahead of time. Right. We don't worry about it until something happens. I've been saying that for ages with regard to my favorite example, which is um, out in Eaton, Ohio, mm -hmm. which is country bumfuck USA. That yeah, is. Um, there was a train track. And they had a rail or a, a guard thing that came down, but they didn't have, or no, they didn't have the guard thing. They just had the lights. Yeah. And they had to have so many fucking accidents happen, before. deaths, yeah. before they would put up a fucking rail that came down yeah. to stop traffic. That's the same thing with car companies. They got to have so many deaths happen mm -hmm. for something that's wrong with their cars across the board yeah. before they take action on that and do a recall. There has to be either enough um, financial hit or right. enough financial incentive for yeah. them to take an action that is a okay. It's the same reason we have climate issues right now and we're not yep. doing anything about it because yep. it hasn't actually hit anything. Like no, not, it has hit lots of things. It hasn't but, hit anything that rich people give a fuck about. Right, exactly. That's, because that's that's the yeah they'll be they'll be the first to you know be okay because they all have bolt holes and they all have places right you know and well, i imagine when the fucking power grids start going down all the time because of fucking climate change mm -hmm. they're gonna be like why didn't somebody fix this and we're gonna be like because of you assholes right, right. i'm just saying like yeah. it's your fault yeah you know why texas is still having power problems yeah but it's not quite enough yet to like cause massive concern and we can blame it on other things it's just a bad it's a bad winter it's a bad whatever bad heat, right heat, heat well and as long as as long as um what's his name Cruz mm -hmm. can continue to go to cancun when the power goes out in winter right who gives a fuck yeah if the entirety of texas freezes to death who gives a fuck yep that so. is true yeah so parables good stuff yep yep <laughs> That's it for today. Okay. So that was uh, that was the last one we had? Yep. 
Okay, awesome. Well, um, what are we going to be doing when we come back next week with this? When we come back next week, as I said before, we will be continuing with some parables. And we will get into the ancient art of reasoning. Okay, and sounds good. After that is some wise judges and riddle solvers. So, I mean, we've we've got some stuff to do under wise men. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed today's stories they were good so yeah. um that was that was awesome i'm looking forward to next week and um i will have here in a little bit today we'll have out the weekly replay mm-hmm. after i'm done getting this one put out yep which is coming out slightly late so again apologies just been a rough you know few it's days been a holiday here, so. weekend it's been a holiday weekend yeah get off me it's a holiday <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll be back uh monday with second chronicles chapter six yes see you guys then bye Hey, wife, I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.